Technology always has mirrored, if not driven, the social and cultural formations of various ages throughout human history. The development of the printing press, the assembly line, factory labor, the internal combustion engine, all have variously changed the way we live in Western society. So too, we live in an age of technological innovation, which will inevitably have a substantive impact on our current forms of life. This has profound effects on the political and cultural climate of the age, as well as art, the way we understand ourselves, our relationship to one another, and more broadly, our place in the world. We live in an age of constant communication, whether it be through older communication methods, such as phone or fax, uh, or the new media, email, text messaging, social networking. Young people growing up in this age of technological innovation have created, uh, acclimated to this multitasking environment. This allows for a profound change in the way that we view our world and our place in it. It's no surprise then when we see these same basic features reflected in art. Modular art, in the way that it incorporates uh, various divergent forms of media, from video and images to sounds, both pre-recorded and live, uh, develops a degree of complexity heretofore unseen in music. It is music for a new generation. We have seen a flourish of new and interesting collaborative methods in music, art, and culture. Cliché image of the composer or artist working in solitude to complete his or her own, her own single vision seems somewhat antiquated and quaint in relation to this new method. Art is and always has been publicly consumed, uh, but rarely has it been publicly created. One clear example that exemplifies this new modular method in music is Wikipedia. The wiki model allows separate collaborators to contribute each their own knowledge and skills to the creation of the entire work. What's most interesting about this phenomena, which most clearly ties to the spirit, uh, revolutionary spirit of modular art, is not only that it's collaborative, but rather it's not owned by any one person. Through the birth of YouTube and file sharing, we are slowly getting away from the idea of ownership over intellectual works, which, for some, is a welcome change from the traditional capitalist views concerning artistic labor and the ownership of the work of art. A fairly popular way in which one comes to understand an artistic work philosophically is a method called hermeneutics. The method originates with scriptural interpretation following Martin Luther's Protestant Revolution. Uh, more recently, through the work of such figures as Hans-Georg Gadamer, Paul Ricoeur, Charles Taylor, it has developed a life of its own, and the interpretation of literature, art, and more generally, all aspects of social existence have been shown to be hermeneutic in nature. The basic idea of this method revolves around the idea of the so-called hermeneutic circle. Uh, the idea is as follows. One can only understand the whole work, understood in terms of its parts, and its parts can only be understood in terms of its whole. Take, for example, a novel. There's a sense in which we can say that the plot of the whole is more or less a compilation of the various actions and dialogues of the given characters. But likewise, we can only come to a complete understanding of the character's dialogue and actions relative to the plot of the whole. Now, clearly there's a circular aspect to this, but it's a virtuous circle, not a vicious circle. Perhaps better, it's circular in one axis, but that circle does ca not capture a third dimension of movement, that is, its depth. We get an image not of a circle, but a spiral, increasing in depth on each subsequent exposure to the work of art. Modular art is hermeneutic in spirit, not so much in, uh, as a method of interpreting artistic works, but moreover as a method for composition development of art. The idea of various independent themes coalescing into a whole is the very center of its method, the whole work is made up of the various uh, themes, but the entire composition allows one to rethink how those themes and various performers come together to create something new. Traditionally, music relies upon the dimension of time alone. Aside from the basics of acoustics of a given performance venue, there's not much role for the spatial dimension in music. That's what's really revolutionary about modular art. It integrates the peculiarities of the spatial dimension as well as the temporal. Traditionally, in an amphitheater or concert venue, there's a space for the musicians in the orchestra pit or on the stage, and a separate reserved space for the audience. Generally, the experience of the audience is fixed. It remains, one remains seated in the same location. And while there may be subtle differences between one seat and another, 
from the audience's perspective, the various spatial peculiarities are nullified and the experience is static. The Modular Zoo project collapses the distinction between performance space and audience space and attempts to integrate these two spatial zones in new and interesting ways. Imagine a large room with various musicians set up at the far corners of the room. The audience is standing, not seated, which allows one to move during the performance. One can position oneself in various spatial locations to be closer to one instrument or another and to let one theme or another dominate. If one were to cross from one corner to another, uh, another set of themes might emerge. Uh, not only does this collapse the binary opposition between performer space and audience space, but allows the listener to become a participant, allowing one to alter the performance at will. The listener is not in a static position, but a dynamic one. Not only does the audience member become part of the performance, but he or she is a de facto performer, playing, so to speak, the space. <laughs> 